In early 2025, a teenager with a rare immune disorder made medical history becoming the first human ever treated with prime editing. Prime editing works like the find and replace function in a document. But here, scientists corrected a faulty gene in his own stem cells, then returned those cells to his body to restore immune function. One procedure, one cure. Behind it all, AI is rewriting the very code of life faster than anyone thought possible. Every cell in our bodies carries the same complete blueprint, our DNA, neatly packaged into 46 chromosomes. Think of chromosomes as books in a massive library, and together they make up our genome, the full instruction manual for building and running us. But here's the twist. Not every cell reads every book. A skin cell doesn't need the muscle chapters, and a neuron ignores the liver sections. That's where our epigenome comes in a system of chemical punctuation marks and bookmarks that tell each cell which genes to turn on and which to keep silent. Over time, tiny mistakes creep into the DNA itself like typos in the code. Meanwhile, at the ends of our chromosomes sit telomeres' protective caps, like the tips on shoelaces. Every time a cell divides, these caps get shorter, until they can't protect our genetic material anymore. Aging, in many ways, is an information problem. And if we can correct that information in both the DNA and its epigenetic instructions, we could slow, or even reverse, the aging process. Back in 2012, scientists Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier took inspiration from one of nature's oldest survival tricks, the bacterial immune system. Here's how it works in nature. Some bacteria keep a kind of genetic mugshot of past invaders. In their DNA, they store unusual repeating sequences called CRISPR. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. These repeats are separated by spacers, tiny fragments of viral DNA from infections the bacteria have survived. If that same virus attacks again, the bacteria make an RNA copy of the matching spacer. This RNA guides a special protein Cas9 to the invader's DNA, and Cas9 cuts it, killing the virus. In 2012, Doudna and Charpentier discovered they could reprogram this natural system to target any DNA sequence, not just viruses. Suddenly, we had programmable DNA scissors. The breakthrough was so revolutionary, it won them the Nobel Prize in chemistry. But CRISPR 1.0 wasn't perfect. Think of it like cutting a sentence out of a book with garden shears. Powerful, but not always precise. Sometimes it cut the wrong spot, causing off-target mutations that could be dangerous. And designing the guide RNA, the molecular address that tells CRISPR where to cut, could take months. Editing simple genes was possible. Complex genetic changes? Still a challenge. The teenager treated with prime editing wasn't a miracle of CRISPR 1.0. It was the result of a new generation of gene editing tools. If CRISPR 1.0 was like a pair of GPS-guided scissors, CRISPR 2.0 and 3.0 are more like precision word processors for our DNA. The first real breakthroughs with base editing emerged around 2016. Prime editing was first demonstrated in 2019, but it was only in the early 2020s thanks to AI-driven protein modeling, cheaper DNA sequencing, and better delivery systems that these tools became accurate and safe enough for real patients. Instead of cutting and hoping the cell fixes itself, base editing and prime editing rewrite the genetic code letter by letter. No full cuts, no large damage. Think of it as hitting find and replace in a three billion letter book. Today, AI is upgrading these tools even further. Google DeepMind's AlphaFold 3 doesn't just predict protein structures. It models interactions between proteins, DNA, RNA, and small molecules. That means scientists can design edits faster, simulate them for safety, and reduce mistakes before they ever touch a human cell. And in 2025, Prime Medicine treated the first ever patient with Prime Editing, a milestone once thought to be a decade away. Imagine if you could roll back your biological clock, not decades, but just enough to make your cells act young again. This is the promise of epigenetic reprogramming, 
resetting the chemical markers that control which genes turn on and off. At the heart of this are three special genes, nicknamed OSK, OCT4, SOX2, and CLEF4. In 2006, Nobel laureate Shinya Yamanaka discovered that these factors could take an adult cell and rewind it all the way to an embryonic-like state turning back time to zero. But for longevity, that's too far. A fully reset cell forgets its job, and it can even turn cancerous. That's why scientists use partial reprogramming, just enough OSK activation to rejuvenate the cell while keeping its identity. In mice, this has restored vision in glaucoma, healed organs, and extended healthy lifespan. AI is now helping researchers find the safe window, the perfect dosage and timing, so we can rejuvenate without chaos. What was once a futuristic lab experiment is now becoming real medicine. Take the PCSK9 edit. This gene acts like a volume knob for LDL, the bad cholesterol that clogs arteries and fuels heart attacks. In a recent trial, a single CRISPR-based base edit to PCSK9 lowered LDL by over 50%. Permanently. No daily statins, no repeat treatments, one edit, one result. Or, consider ATTR amyloidosis a rare but deadly disease where misfolded proteins build up in vital organs, slowly shutting them down. A CRISPR therapy targeting the faulty gene behind this condition has reached phase three trials, the final step before potential approval. If it succeeds, it could be the first genetic cure for a fatal protein disorder. And then there's type one diabetes, a condition where the immune system destroys the pancreas insulin producing cells. In 2025, Doctors transplanted CRISPR-edited islet cells designed to hide from the immune system. For the patient, it meant something extraordinary, producing their own insulin again, without daily injections or immune-suppressing drugs. Now imagine your doctor's visit in the 2030s, a quick blood test. AI runs the analysis, and you get a personalized gene edit to reverse or prevent disease. Your biological age, 20 years younger in months, not decades. For all its promise, gene editing carries real dangers. A single off-target edit cutting or rewriting the wrong part of the genome can trigger cancer, genetic defects, or entirely new diseases. Even if the science is sound, mistakes can happen during delivery into the body. Viruses used to transport edits can sometimes provoke dangerous immune reactions. Then there's the question of access. Will these treatments be available to everyone, or only to the wealthiest? History tells us that new medical technologies often start as luxuries. Think organ transplants, IVF, even antibiotics in the 1940s. Without global cooperation, gene editing could widen the gap between the rich and the poor into something almost biological, a split between the genetically enhanced and the rest. And what about deliberate misuse? We're not just talking about designer babies with chosen eye color or athletic ability but the possibility of weaponized gene editing targeting specific populations. The risk isn't just theoretical. Collecting genetic data through health programs, ancestry tests, or even international sports events could give bad actors the blueprint for highly specific bioweapons. Technology this powerful is like fire. It can light the way forward or burn everything down. That's why transparent regulation, international oversight, and public trust will matter as much as the science itself. Imagine this. Your biological age no longer tied to the day you were born. One visit to the clinic. Decades erased from your cells. Energy restored. Diseases stopped. Before they even start. By 2030. This won't be science fiction. It will be the combined force of AI-guided CRISPR, base, and prime editing epigenetic reprogramming, and longevity drugs discovered by algorithms. If aging is just code, we can debug it, and when that happens, youth won't be the dream anymore, it will be the default. We've just seen how AI is rewriting the code of life itself, turning what once seemed impossible into real medicine. But where does this lead us in the decades ahead? A future without aging, or something far stranger? Your thoughts shape where we go next, drop a comment below and let's explore it together.